it's kind of cut out of metal. And so Cinema 4D has some really great tools for doing this. Let's start by building a couple of splines. And so let's create a, uh, let's just start with a rectangle. And you can make yours a little bit different than mine. That's fine. So you can see my rectangle is oriented in this way. You can change the way it's oriented by choosing the plane that it's drawn on. But this is fine. We'll leave it as uh, along the XY plane. But I want to add to this. So I don't want just a square. I want a little bit more detail uh, for this. And so let me just duplicate this a couple of times. Oops. So I'm just going to control drag it down so we get three rectangles. This rectangle, I'm going to change the width. So I'll make it a little bit wider. Uh, but I'll make it a bit narrower. So maybe, I don't know, maybe 120. I'm going to move it up here. And yours doesn't have to look ex exactly like mine. Um, you could also just now duplicate this one and bring that down instead of having your other duplicate there. So now what I want to do is I want to combine these into one object. So one sort of seamless spline that encompasses this whole thing. So to do that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I want to join together these two. So I'll just say connect objects and delete. Oops, I don't need to do that. I want to actually make those editable first. That'll turn them into splines and then when I connect objects and delete, it'll leave it as a spline. So because it was a, a primitive still, it wanted to turn that into uh, like a polygon shape. So let's take our other rectangle and make that into just an editable spline. And then I want to bring in something called the spline mask. And I'll drop both of these splines into the spline mask. And you can see already uh, we've got the mode set to A, union B. So what it's doing is taking the first one and it's making a union out of the second one. So you can see here A union B along the Z axis. If we were to change the axis, you'd get a different result because of the way that our splines are drawn. Uh, we could also subtract out B from A or intersection. And what you do also, you know, will change based on your the order of your splines in there so you can see that gives you a different result but if you're doing a union um, that doesn't matter we can still go in and select any of the splines and we can modify those uh, to get the result that we want now we can also come in here and let's select these points on the end okay so we've got those points right now they're completely sharp if we go to right click and go to chamfer I'll click and drag that and that you can see I can get a little bit of a curve there. So that kind of allows us to round off those. Okay, so let's say we want something like that. Now we don't have any geometry on this yet. And so let's bring in, uh, let's go over here and bring in an extrude. And I'm just going to drop the spline mask underneath. I don't even need to bake this down if I don't want to. And then with extrude, that'll actually add geometry to your splines. Now, you've got caps, which tell how the front and back are created. Right now, they're just straight caps. So you can see this line is very, very sharp. But if you change that to a fillet cap, you can come in and change the type of bevel. We can also change the amount. So we can get something that's a little bit more rounded off. And if you want to do more you know, add a couple of steps to that, you can round it off. So let's take our extrude now and let's scale it down. I'm going to kind of put it into position here. We'll probably want to add a little bit more thickness to it, but let me scale it down first. Kind of put it right around his belt there, right around his waist. So if I want to add some thickness, we can go into the extrude, go to object, and we can change the movement. So we can make it a lot thicker. Just holding down Alt to get a little bit finer control over that. And I'll just push it in. Okay, if that's a little bit too thick, again, you can just dial that thickness down there. 
Okay, so working with splines in Cinema 4D is actually really, really easy, and it's actually a lot of fun. So uh, we'll do um, another piece here in the next lesson that's kind of similar to that, using some other splines um, and creating some geometry from that. So uh, let's go ahead in the next lesson and use the same sort of technique to create kind of a, an insignia for his sh shirt there. And we'll do it the same way. So yours can look different than mine. I'm just going to go ahead and bring in, let's say, a flower will give us a kind of a good starting point. So we've got the flower. We can change the inner radius. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that inner radius out. So it's more like that. And I'm going to reduce the number of petals. So maybe do like seven. It's kind of an off number, not an even number. So uh, maybe make it seven. We can also change the outer radius. And I'll kind of pull this in, give more like a, I don't know, kind of a shield kind of a look or badge kind of a look. Uh, to it. We can also come in here and rotate it. So let's say I want to kind of rotate it up like that. And then I want to have like a hole in the middle. Now we don't need to do any sort of uh, fancy spline mask to create a hole in this. All we need to do is have that spline in there. So um, let's go ahead and bring in another spline and let's bring in an inside. Let's change the number of sides. And I'm just going to change it to three. Okay, we can turn on rounding and then reduce the radius if we want something that's not completely sharp. So let's make the rounding kind of similar to the edges here. Okay, let's we'll take the radius down a bit. So maybe something more like that. And then if you want to, you could leave it like that. It's kind of a play button or you could rotate it to make it more kind of straight up and down something like that increase the radius now we're not going to be able to make this hole make this a hole unless we combine these together so let's take both of these and make them editable and then let's do a current uh, connect objects and delete so now we have a single spline that contains these two separate splines here. Now all we have to do is add the extrude. So come in here and add an extrude. Add this in. Now this smoothness is defined by the spline, so any of the corners like that, but the smoothness of these edges is defined by the caps in the extrude. So we'll go to the extrude, and remember go to caps, and we can change that to fillet cap, and then we just need to take this down a little bit, Okay, and then depending on the kind of bevel that you want, you can change that in here by softening up the edge, just adding steps there. We can also uh, come in here on the object and add some thickness by changing the movement. Something like that. Let's take the extrude now, and I'm just going to scale it down a bit. And put it up into position. Still a bit large, so we'll take it down a little bit more. So this is, again, as I kind of mentioned, it's kind of fun to, to play around with the splines. It's really easy to create something cool and, and add some thickness to it. So I'd encourage you to do that. And if you need to do like a Boolean shape, then spline mask will enable you to do that. Or if you just need to have a combination of splines, then just make sure they're editable and then use uh, connect objects and create a single spline. And then that anything that's you know on the inside there like that will become a hole. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is starting some epaulets on his shoulders. And we'll use splines again, but we'll use them in a slightly different way uh, to do that. Just again, do those yet. So this last piece here, has the arm in it. And so all we need to do is get rid of everything that's not the arm. So let's select that object. And remember the shirt comes right up to here. And so we can come in and you can see that we added an extra line in there. So we want to make sure to add a line right up inside there. And then we can get rid of any polygons that are kind of beyond that line. Okay, and then any of these 
we don't need any more because we've already built those all those other pieces. Okay, so once we've got the arm separated out, you'll probably want to come in and let's add a smooth to that. So put it in a subdivision surface. Let's take those points and let me do an optimize and then I'm just going to grab the points on the inside of the arm there and just scale him down a little bit so his arm goes inside of his sleeve. Okay, so we get something like that. And then you can do a symmetry on that to get the other side. Now as far as the epaulets go, it's just another little detail that we want to add kind of on the shoulders. These little strategic details on, on stylized characters like this can really help. And so let's go into the front view and let's grab a spline and I want to actually draw out a spline and so these selections here at the top are going to enable us to draw out splines different kinds of splines in different ways I'm just going to do a cubic spline and so I'll start here and just kind of draw this out and I can be pretty rough about it but I just want to create kind of a loop sort of shape and I don't really need to be too tight in there because we are going to want to add some thickness to it we can then come in and we can kind of move the points around if we want to. Okay, and let's kind of pull this in a little. Now I want to give this a little bit of thickness. And so one of the ways we can do this is I'm just going to right click and let's do create outline. And then I'm just going to click and drag and you can see that it's pulling it out now it's very very smooth here and so because I know that we're gonna be kind of smoothing this later I'm gonna select the spline before I do the outline let's go into the type and right now it's set to cubic let's just set it to linear and then let's do our outline and so you can do it in either way but I'm just gonna pull it in like that okay Now we've got our spline there, right? So the next thing that we want to do is add a little bit of the thickness to it. So let's add an extrude, put the spline in there. Take this down a little bit. I actually want it to go the other way, so I'll kind of pull this in, about a negative three or so. Now that's giving us geometry and you can see here I've got the cap set to N-Gon. And so it gives us a really a nice clean shape. The only problem is it's got we've got these N-Gons on the sides, but that's okay because we can very easily come in and draw those on. And so let's take this extrude, right click, and I'm going to just make it editable. So now we've got this polygon. Now if we check, I just want to grab one of these points and check, and you can see that it actually is not really connected to that cap. And so if I open this up, you can see the caps are actually separate pieces. So when you, whenever you bake these, some of these generators down, just be aware that sometimes you're gonna have multiple pieces, for instance, on cylinders with caps and things like that. Um, so what we can do is we can come in here and we can just connect them all together. You can see though the points still aren't really connected um, so we could come in and go to connect, drop it inside of a connect, and then make that editable. And that'll connect it all up. Now we still need to connect it with the lines, and so we can do that with our knife. Let's choose line mode. And I'm just going to come across here. And let's actually set this to single. That way we can just really quickly come in here and draw across. And so you could leave your splines cubic or really smooth and then you know do your caps. If you're not going to be deforming it or anything that can be a way to go but if you want to have a little bit more of a clean piece of geometry you can do it like this where use the linear splines and then you can kind of use your knife to clean it up. This way you know, it's more like a traditional polygon piece of geometry. 
let's turn off the visibility here of this guy. So let me turn that off, go back to here, get our knife and we'll just complete this. Okay, now if we're gonna be smoothing this, we want to add some edges to kind of hold the shape. So we'll add one there, there and there, and probably back in here. And let's add a couple right in there. So now when we take this piece of geometry, add a subdivision surface and drop it in, smooths it out. You see we get a nice clean piece of geo there. All right. Now you can see here that we actually wanted to kind of come down and connect. And so we can select this still really low res actually. So we can take our points and just begin to move those down until it sort of attaches there. Do the same thing right here. Add a little bit more of that loop and and just shape it because it's it's low enough res we can we can do that. We can see the the resulting smooth geometry there. Okay, so once we've got that uh, to that point, let's go ahead and add a little bit of a, a detail up on the top there, and then we can duplicate it over to the other side. Add a simple star, and I'm going to modify this to match with kind of our theme on the, the badge and just change the points and make it a seven pointed star. Let's change the radius and we can change the outer radius a little bit too. Now to add the geometry we'll just go to extrude drop the star underneath there. Go to the extrude um, and you can change the the thickness of it if you want to. We can also go to caps and let's change the fillet on this end cap and then we can change the sort of the radius there to, to give it a little bit of more of a, a big bevel okay now we kind of we kind of looked at a couple of different ways of, of using these splines when we actually created the epaulette we created some nice clean geometry uh, when doing it like this where you have these caps as end gons a lot of times you're not going to want to have those end gons in your scene um, depending on the pipeline that you're using. So there are different ways that you can come in and, and figure out how you want this cap created. So you can make those into quadrangles. You can change it to regular grid. It's not gonna be the prettiest uh, topology. You can also manually come in with your knife and, uh, and draw out polygons the way that you want them. You can make it triangles. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave mine as an ingon. Just be aware that that's an issue when you have this generated geometry. Sometimes these caps can be uh, not ideal for working in a pipeline. So sometimes you may have to bake them down and, and draw across. But we'll leave them as they are for now. Let's just take this up. And also keep in mind when you're using these splines with the generators, you can move the spline too if you want to. Um, sometimes I, I just like to move the generator too, just so it stays with it. It'll still generate the geometry, uh, but the center of it will be off. And then if you want it to be, um, centered up again, you can, there's a couple of things you can do, but I'll sometimes just use it to move the, move the object around. The Cinema 40s, as you've seen throughout this course, the, the way that it works as far as parenting and the hierarchy is really kind of cool where you can set up these relationships that create geometry in different ways and then you can you have a lot of flexibility in determining how that relationship is affecting what it is what it's actually creating so thinking about things like the uh, the spline mask and the order of the splines and things like that it's pretty cool so we can bring this uh, up to the side here on our little band and in our extrude I can Give it a little bit more thickness. And oops, let me actually bring that up a little bit. There we go. So Alt will A to dial it up just a little. Move it over. Let's rotate it. 
I'll just rotate it in screen space and I'll just set it kind of right on top of there. All right, and now we can take that and um, move it over. Now, we don't have a lot of these things named. Some of them we do, some of them we don't, uh, but we want to go ahead and uh, make a habit out of kind of naming these things, and we can call this maybe um, head sub D. So you can start to name the generators as well, you know, eyes, symmetry, just so it's very clear you don't start to get a lot of, you know, duplicated things and things you don't really know what it is. Pants, sub D. Okay, so go through and start naming your objects a little bit better. And then we can also use symmetry to kind of copy this over. Okay, now one of the last things we want to do is add some sort of bumps to the head and then we'll finish. I want them to be fairly low resolution and then we'll smooth them later on. So uh, I want to use the same sort of topology we use for the head that is kind of a cube shape. One of the things that we can do if we know we want it to be really rounded is to actually use a sphere, but we can change the sphere type. So remember I said I didn't like the poles as much. So if we change the type from standard to hexahedron, we can get that sort of cube type topology. Let's just reduce our segments. You can see it gets lower and lower res. Let's come down to eight. And I'll use that for the base of our uh, sort of spots there. So let's make that editable. I'm going to get rid of the polygons on the bottom because I want these to kind of stick into his head. So we'll do something like that. Delete those. Go to our points and let's optimize to get rid of those. And now we can take this bit and let's bring it up and sort of scale it down. And we'll just concentrate on one side. Now I'm moving the, the polygons around. If we go to object, you can see that our pivot is now down here where we left it. And so if you ever want to move your pivot, we can go to mesh axis center and let's center axis to, and it'll move that up. And now in object mode, we have our, our pivot back where it needs to be. So let's come in here and I'm just going to start with a couple. Let's kind of scale it out a little bit, maybe bring it in a little, scale the whole thing down, and just kind of move them around a little bit until you get a, a configuration that you like. So I'm thinking maybe something like that, maybe a bit longer. Kind of bring that down a little bit. So think about these in terms of, you know, being smooth, and then I'll copy it. And let's do another one kind of up here. This one will kind of scale down a little bit more. Move into the head. Maybe rotate it that way. I just want to make sure that it there's no exposed edges. And then we can do some kind of smaller ones down here. So again, just control drag that to duplicate it. Do a smaller, smaller one right here. Let me scale that in a bit. And just create kind of a variety. I'm going to concentrate it more kind of on the side of the head and maybe around to the back. So let me just pause the video here while I copy a few more of these. It's going to be the exact same procedure. Just control drag it to copy it, rotate it, and scale it into the position that you want and create kind of a, you could even do kind of a design if you wanted to. And we'll do something interesting with the, with the material when we come in in the finish up in the last lesson. So just spend a little bit of time putting some, some of these and kind of reorient them a little bit if you need to. But let me pause the video and I'll come in with a few more of these placed. So I've just got a few more of these added. Let's grab all of these once we've got them. And let's just do connect and delete. So we'll just call this something like head 
spots. And then uh, if you want to uh, automatically bring this in, we can hit Alt and hit our subdivision. And that'll automatically uh, parent that up in case you don't want to just bring it in and drop it under. Okay, and then same thing here. We can do a symmetry. And the symmetry is off a little bit. I think in this case we need to bring it in separately. We'll create our symmetry and then drop the subdivision in. Oops, there we go. So now we've got our sort of spots, little details up on the head there. All right, so let's go ahead in the next lesson and finish up by adding some simple materials. And we'll look at how we can start to separate the materials based on different. But let's begin creating some materials. So let's go ahead and create just a new material. And we'll start creating some materials and, and figuring out what we want to apply them to. So let's say we want to have an eye white material. So we'll call this eye white material. And if we want to come in here, we can maybe add a little bit of reflection if we want to. If we want to really brighten it up, we could add some luminance to it. So let's say that's the eye white. Let's say that we also want one for the iris. And so we can call this iris material, maybe in the color. You can make it whatever color you want. Let's make it, uh, let's make it sort of orange, I guess. We could also add a little bit of luminance to that and maybe make that luminance kind of orange. We can take the brightness down a little bit. Okay, maybe for the pants, we want those to be kind of the pants of the boots. We want them to be black. So we'll call this, um, just call it black mat. And for the color, let's start by just making it a really dark, maybe not black, but maybe really close to that. You can also change the specularity. You can see there's different modes here. And you can change the width to kind of sharpen that up or make it a little bit broader. You can also change the intensity of it. So we'll do something like that. Now to start applying it materials, all we have to do is take our material and apply it here or here. And so let's say for our eyes, we apply the eye white to the eye. We can apply the this to the pants. And let's say also to the boots. Okay, maybe this one is more like his shirt. And maybe it's closer to white, but maybe not as shiny as the eye. So we can apply that to his shirt. Let's do one for the body. So we'll create a new material for the body. We'll call this, let me move this over. Call this body mat. For the color, let's choose, I'm just going to choose kind of a blue. And then let's take a look at what we can do here to add a little bit more of kind of an interesting look to it. So we'll choose a blue for the color and let's go ahead and add it to the head and the arms. Now one cool thing that we can do is we can actually add a bit of color around the edges of this. And so to do that, let's go into luminance, turn on luminance, and inside of the texture, we want to choose this for now. And so this will allow us to change the look of the material based on what edges are facing away from us and which edges are facing towards us. Um, and so let's go into the Fresnel. So right now the edges that are facing away are this white and then it's layering on top of this black, the edges that are facing towards us. Okay, and so we can kind of tighten that up by moving it to where that's a tighter edge around the, uh, around the edge. And we can also change this color so I want to change this to like a, a brighter blue. So you get this sort of definition around the edges. I'll make it maybe even a little bit brighter. And let's maybe make the overall color a little bit darker. To kind of emphasize that. The specularity too, let's kind of tighten up the specularity. And we'll kind of bring this down a little bit. Maybe something like that. And so you can kind of go back and forth. I think I do want to kind of brighten this up a little. 
and then you can adjust the Fresnel to go with that. Okay, so it's a bit brighter there. And we can do the same thing down here, even on the, the pants. You know, they're black pants, but to really make that pop out and give it a really kind of cartoony look, we can go into luminance. Again, add that Fresnel, and then we can come in here and adjust it. Okay, and you can really start to see kind of the shape a little bit more. Now, I probably don't want it to be white, maybe kind of a blue gray something like that but it just gives you a little bit of detail and that may be even is a little bit too dark okay and you could even do it on like the the white shirt if you wanted to now let's do uh, a material for the bumps We'll do something that's kind of reverse of that. So let's add the bump material. So we can add it there. We can just add it to the polygon geometry itself. Let's come in and the luminance and we'll add our Fresnel, but this time we'll do it slightly differently. So let's switch this up. And I'm going to make this kind of a bright blue. Let's make that kind of white. Um, and so you can have like, or you could make it darker actually. You could have it kind of darker around the sides. And kind of bright in the middle could come in here and add like a, a white, a lighter color. Okay, that's probably a little bit too much. We can also take the specularity of that down a little bit. And let's make our color kind of blue. And so you can get kind of a, a glow going on there. That in. And you can play around with the positioning and of this if you want to kind of tighten it up. Or if you want to add you know, other colors in there. Give it sort of a real interesting effect. Now as far as the oops, as far as the eyes go, what I want to do is go ahead and because I want to separate out the different materials, we want to create a selection for this and so we want to create a selection tag let's go ahead and you know, live selection and let's grab just the iris okay and let's go to mesh uh, let's see actually select is where we want to go set selection and then I can name this iris on the lower right and you can see it's created a selection tag there now let's select off of that. We don't want to have that selected. And we'll select these polygons in the middle. Let's go to select, set selection, and we'll create a new one. And we'll call this pupil. Let's create a new material. And let me reduce this size so we can see it. And we'll call this pupil material. This one, we don't need the color. We just want the luminance. And we want the luminance to be black. I don't need specular either. We just want it to be blacked out. So now what we can do is let's apply all these materials. So we'll apply the iris material and the pupil material. So we've got all these materials here, three materials assigned to this. So what we want to do is tell Cinema 4D which selection, which of these polygon tags we want these materials applied to. So we'll select the pupil material and under selection we can choose pupil and then under the orange one we'll choose iris and then we just want to make sure that they are in the right spot let me make sure i've named those right okay that's iris with the capital i and then that is people with a capital p 
Okay, so let me pull that forward. So now that's applied only to the pupil polygons. This one's applied only to the iris polygons, and this white is only applied to the, the rest of the eye. So let me turn that off. And you can see where you can use multiple materials to uh, add to a single object. So have a little bit of fun with, you know, adding more colors and materials. And if you want to continue on with the kind of techniques that we use as far as building extra uh, pieces to this guy, feel free to do that. So uh, this has just been kind of a, uh, a starting point of getting into building cartoony kind of characters. And even if you don't necessarily want to end up building cartoony or stylized characters, it's a good starting point on just looking at how to build up those shapes. And realistic characters are kind of more of the same. So you have a lot of the same techniques. It's just more detailed, obviously. Um, or if you want to continue on with the stylized uh, nature of it, then you've got a good base for building that geometry. Now it comes down to kind of the design um, and that sort of thing. You can start out by using existing designs, or if you um, feel like you want to go ahead and design your own, then feel free to do that. And again, post those online. We always love to see work done um, through our courses. So hope you've enjoyed the last couple of hours going through uh, this creating of cartoon characters in Cinema 4D. It's a really great application for building these and, and uh, has some really cool tools.